Coming up next on City Corner, we talk with the face of SLPS, fathers as advocates for their children's education. Please stay tuned. Welcome to City Corner. I'm your host, Melanie Adams. Today, we're talking with the face of SLPS, Fathers as Advocates for Their Children's Education, a parent organization with the St. Louis Public Schools. Joining me today is Warice Davis, who helped start this program in the school district. Thank you for joining us. Oh, you're welcome, Melanie. It's my pleasure. Tell me a little bit about the FACE program and how it was started. Well, actually, the FACE of SLPS program uh, was first uh, initiated in 2009. Mm -hmm. uh, during that summer, you actually came to us with <laughs> exactly. a request that we um, read some information about the Black Star Project, mm -hmm. uh, and it's based in Chicago. And what they do is they sponsor a million five of the March each mm -hmm. year. Well, I kind of decided, let's give a different spin for St. Louis Public Schools. And I thought about, you know, how do we represent fathers? And I thought about the most prominent part of any structure is usually the face. Right. So I went with that and came up with fathers as advocates for their children's education. Right. And one of the things I think that's important for us to emphasize right away, it's not only fathers that can be involved in the organization. No, actually that's, that, that is not the case. We need stepfathers. It's not just a biological father. It could be an uncle, a grandparent. Uh, and actually, we do have some moms oh, okay. that declare that they, into the yeah, program. <laughs> they, they say, oh, no, because sometimes dad is not there for whatever reason. So mom steps in. And some of the fathers groups, they really do encourage the moms to join them as well. Because in actuality, it really is families right. as advocates for their children's education. So that, that kind of lends that extra layer when right. mom and is there I think there that's as well. a nice change with the F then. So families, yeah. av families as advocates for their children's okay. education, a nice way to include everyone. Exactly. Well, how did it go that first year? How was the reception from the fathers? Actually, the, the reception from the beginning has mm -hmm. always been very, very uh, high. Dads get excited mm -hmm. because for once they're in the spotlight. Usually it's mom that's coming right. to school when dad said, well, you know, I can stick my chest out. I'm super dad. You know, dads <laughs> like that feeling of being important in their kids' lives. And the children, they actually uh, behave a little bit differently when dad mm -hmm. is there. Mom is kind of the traditional, well, I know she's going to look at the emotional side of what I'm going through. Dad is going to say, hey, you know what, you can do this. And they, they do more of the uh, focused kind of, you know, uh, grounding for the kids. And they don't just necessarily go with how they're feeling emotionally. We've got to get a job done. And most men are very task oriented. So that really lends a good layer to it. How have the teachers and the administrators in the building um, how have they um, received the program? Well, I think it's sort of like, you know, uh, back when we were younger, um, Mrs. Billingsley mm -hmm. on uh, <laughs> Leave it to Beaver right. would say, wait till your dad, dad gets home. Well, administration and teachers think, hey, your dad's going to be here. Right. You better get it in gear. So that's, that's a really good support for behavior. And also, it helps the kids to get a little bit more enthused because, again, dad been in there really, really makes them happy. Right. Well, and I guess as someone who helps start this program, how do, you, how do you respond, I guess, when people always say, oh, SLPS parents just aren't involved? And you see them involved every day. So how does that make you feel? Well, actually, it, I, I love a challenge. Mm -hmm. So what I do is I offer them information about what has happened. I, I inform them about, we, we actually have an advisory board. Oh, okay. And the advisory board really has uh, garnered the support of people like Harold, Harold Wilson. Mm -hmm. He's with City Courts, uh, Charles right. Bryson. Right. Public uh, safety. Right. Um, we have the NAACP president, okay. St. Louis okay. chapter, right. Adolphus Pruitt. Pruitt right. So when I tell them about the involvement of these men who do not have children in the building, right. you know, they kind of think, well, if they're coming in and they're assisting and they're supporting education, then why not me? You know, and we tell them about the pizza with pops right. and how. Um, it's, it's very kind of laid back and it's pretty mm -hmm. much how they want it to be in their building. We have dads that listen to children read. We mm -hmm. have dads that read to children. We have an African-American uh, read-in mm -hmm. and even the superintendent attended and we have, you know, 
photos of right. them reading to kids. And that, that was really, really good for them to see the superintendent acknowledging their existence like that. So that, that was a big boost. Well, I think you make a really good point that it's not only for men who have kids in the district. So you listed a lot of African-American leaders in, um, in the city who may not have kids in the district or may not have kids, period, but they still know it's important for young African-American kids to see adult role models. Exactly. And, you know, this year we were very fortunate. Um, we have uh, a parent uh, support specialist over at uh, Gateway IT, mm -hmm. and she... I gave her an idea about having lunchtime with parents, mm -hmm. and so when she, I think we showed we were showing some of those pictures just a yeah. few seconds ago. It was out with the parents eating pizza. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> and parents are eating pizza at Gateway. They did a dine with dads, okay. and even though it doesn't say the face of SLPS, that's what it is. So whatever the school designs, and uh, her program actually highlighted uh, the academics. Because it's not just about dad coming in and sitting and being of support. They're actually talking about what percentage of your check would be a tip. You know, oh, okay. how would you rate this service and what type of payment would you offer for that service? So it gave a little bit of critical thinking and the kids got a big kick out of it. They were uh, coming up with probability and statistics types of activities to decide what the majority of uh, the restaurants were that they visited. And dads wouldn't tell them what they were bringing for lunch. They just brought it. Oh, so okay. they kind of made graphs and things like that. So that, that was really exciting. The high school uh, level and middle school, they do flag football. Okay. So again, it's not just about in the classroom. Room. But there, of course, you know there's an application to all sports with math, so and you have to communicate. Right. So again, just having that kind of natural interaction and then making the academic application really helps. Well, I think, and that's what I was going to ask: was this mostly for kids in that K through eight age, or if it does extend to the high school? So you do find that high schoolers are happy to see their fathers or male role models walking into their high school. Right, and we do. We uh, some of the uh, kids are in the military oh, uh, programs, right. Junior ROTC. Mm -hmm. So. So, and then they have dads that were in the military, so they're coming up with their uniforms on. So that's a lot of pride, not just in the school, but in our country itself. So again, it just kind of, you know, it, it lends a layer of responsibility as well. You're responsible for making sure that you are supporting your child. We talk about the rights of parents all the time, but it's mm -hmm. their responsibility to support our education as well. Right. Now, is there a FACE program in every SLPS school? It is, it is, it is uh, encouraged okay. that they actively engage parents at all levels. Some schools are a little bit more successful than others, mm -hmm. but the, usually on the first day of school, we always invite all dads in okay. for that recognition of the Million Fathers March. And I okay. think generally any dad that shows up, any community member, uh, this year we actually in, engaged the faith-based community. Oh, okay. So again, we're looking for all connections to bring uh, the community in to support our youth. So if there are some fathers who have fathers or men who um, r may realize that their neighborhood school doesn't have a FACE program, is that something then they can contact the district and say, hey, we're really interested in having a FACE program at Sherman Elementary or a specific school that doesn't have an active one? Exactly. And, and that, that is the hope. We uh, believe that if we advertise it and we market it enough as a safe activity mm -hmm. for you to do, then dads will come in. They will, sh they will share their talents. I had uh, the privilege of having a stepdad. My, my dad was not in the home, mm -hmm. but because he engaged me in carpentry skills, I was able to build a deck. <laughs> so we have some, I, literally, I, and this deck has been standing for 10 years, so I'm very proud of myself, but I know that had it not been for right. that stepdad that came in and gave me those skills, I wouldn't have been able to do that. So dads who have, and, and business owners, if you have things that you can come in and help to share with those kids, because everything has an application to academics, you, you just can't escape it. You just have to kind of think out of the box and know that what you have to offer is of value. Right. And I think that's a great way, that's a great combination, so it's not purely academics or purely co-curricular after-school activities, but kids get to see their father or their male role model in two different, wa in different ways. Exactly. They're not only seeing them as one-dimensional, but they see that they are very interested in their education as well. Right. Well, where would you like to see the FACE program in five years? So five years from now, when you look back and, you know, if, on this program that you helped start, what, what would make you the most proud? What would make me the most proud is probably if um, each year we have a back to school festival. Mm -hmm. If dads were there to register kids, if dads were there uh, supporting each of our programs to help other parents who aren't as sure about getting involved 
to help them to understand that it, it, this, is, this is part of your responsibility. It's not a burden. It's very easy. You're just using your skills. We have a lot of families that have decided to explore other school districts and other venues for education. Well, my dream, my hope is that we can help, those dads can help welcome our families back because for whatever reason the disconnection happened, we are the best choice. Right. That's where they belong and we want them to come back home. Right. And I think you make a good point. The fathers in a way almost serve as cheerleaders for the district exactly. in a way because they're saying, you know, we put our children in here and we really support the teachers and the work that's going on in SLPS and we support them by showing up. Exactly. And I think, you know, I think mm -hmm. that's very important. Now, if I'm a father and I missed the first few weeks of what's going on at school, is it possible to join FACE throughout the year? Actually, uh, we have what's called FACE Day. Okay. It's the first Tuesday of every month oh, in okay. every school. Mm -hmm. Every school is encouraged to actually um, design their lesson plans around engaging dads or moms or faith-based community members. So if you go into your child's fifth grade classroom, mm -hmm. that teacher should be able to pull you into that lesson to help you oh. to uh, kind of uh, help the children who may be struggling or even if they're not struggling just to add another layer to an, an application we have people who are uh, business owners mm -hmm. well they can take that math lesson and you know just apply it to what they do every day in their businesses so that piece is, is very uh, is very much needed we need them to come in the first Tuesday. You, you're welcome to come any day, right. but that first Tuesday is the day that we actually recognize. We uh, are also looking at in October, we're going to have mm -hmm. what's called uh, Men Making a Difference Day. Okay. Um, I know in February we're going to do the African American read in mm -hmm. again. Um, we have the father daughter dances. Oh, oh okay. they are just oh, no, sir, those dads are have tuxedos. <laughs> We've even had people to drive up to the father daughter dances in limousines. Limousine. So it is very wonderful. And um, sometimes we we um, have situations where they they're having little dance contests. You know, father daughter <laughs> dance. Yeah, dads love to do that. And the the, the uh, little girls and they're they're just looking like, oh God, my dad is embarrassing me. <laughs> but they love it. Right. You know, it's, they're it's happy just like, that they're there. Exactly. The most it is probably one of the proudest moments that they can have. So when the fathers on those Tuesdays, that's purely a drop-in opportunity. They don't have to register. They just know. You said the first or second Tuesday. I'm sorry. The, the first Tuesday first of every Tuesday month. First Tuesday of every month at your school. You're welcome to drop in. Um, you, hopefully your teacher, your child's teacher will have something where they can incorporate you into the lesson plan into the day. Yes, because on the first day of school, uh, they already signed in. Okay. They, they signed in. They registered as the face of okay. SLPS. And so they already know that each first Tuesday, they're expecting me to be here. Um, right. Most of the elementary schools actually put stars up and they say, you know, this is Kayla's dad. Right. You know, and so they're expecting them. And, and when the sign-in sheets are put out, the dad's names are already printed from the first day of school. Oh, okay. So they're so, just checking them yeah, back in. Yeah. So they, they just come in and they just check back in. Yes, I'm here this month. And uh, volunteer services uh, at the end of the year, we recognize our dads for the uh, time that they have put in. So this is a more formal recognition of the time that they have volunteered and supported education for their children. Well, and it sounds like the FACE program has really taken off and has done a great job over the uh, last two years and we look forward to seeing where it's going to go next year and coming up next on City Corner we're actually going to talk with two men who are involved in the Faces of St. Louis program so please stay tuned. United States Armed Forces, the USO, is home. The USO depends on the generosity of the American people, people just like you. To find out how you can help, visit us at USO.org. The USO, until everyone comes home.
Did you vote in the last election? I know I would have. I'd want my voice to be heard. You see, the only way your ideas can count is for our elected officials to hear from you. My dad says it's easy. Just learn about the process and vote. So you have all this power to really make a difference. And you didn't take time to vote? Am I missing something? Learn how to make your ideas count by logging on to www.representativedemocracy.org. When you think of the reasons people end up in the ER, you probably wouldn't think of West Nile virus from mosquitoes, asthma attacks from cockroaches, hantavirus from rodents, or Lyme disease from ticks, even bites from fire ants and other stinging insects send half a million people here every year. But you could make a difference in helping to protect your family from pest-related illnesses. Go to pestworld.org to learn how. Why wait until there's an emergency? Welcome back to City Corner. Today, we're talking with the face of SLPS, Fathers as Advocates for Their Children's Education. Joining me now are James Williams and Maurice Burns, volunteers with the FACE program. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. pleasure. Well, I guess my first question is, why did you join FACE? What was the impetus or the reason why you decided to be involved with this organization? <clears throat> I guess I would have to answer that on several levels. Okay. Uh, on a personal level, uh, I'm a retired educator. Oh, okay. I have been involved in youth development for about 35 years and uh, I consider myself an advocate for young people. Mm -hmm. Also I had a grandson and several uh, nieces that attended Washington Montessori. Oh, okay. So I started volunteering about six years ago and uh, FACE came about about two years ago right. so I was already at the school so okay. I became uh, directly involved with the FACE program. So this was a nice transition for you? Yes. Great, great. And how, why did you get involved? Actually, I have a goddaughter. I don't have children. Okay. And that's a, that's a big plus for FACE, mm -hmm. just fathers and male figures. Mm -hmm. And my goddaughter, I've been active in her life. Uh, we, I take her on a field trip every week from when she oh. was two. Okay. And uh, when uh, the FACE program started, I was at uh, Washington Montessori and Mr. Burns here was almost like a mentor when mm -hmm. I started to volunteer and it was just a natural transition because uh, I had gotten to know the children by that mm -hmm. time and uh, we just thought it was a great idea to be a part of the program. Well and based on some of the things you were telling us early, a bit earlier about your involvement at Washington Montessori, it seems like the FACES organization really tries to make it feel welcoming and like a home for the children. So you can, can you talk a little bit about what you do in terms of you were saying when the buses pull up and you're opening the doors for kids and you're, you're welcoming, welcoming them. Talk a little bit about that. Well, myself, um, what we generally like to do is uh, I've, I've read to classes. Mm -hmm. I'm, I video most things that we do. Oh, that, okay. And uh, I think uh, uh, the young lady from the first segment, I would right. always send copies you down right. to let them know what we were doing. But uh, when uh, there was a problem with parents having somewhere to park when the buses were there, okay. so we decided to tell the parents, pull up beside behind the last bus, we'll get the kids and that'll keep it flowing. Mm -hmm. And we got so, some of the kids have gotten to the point where they won't budge <laughs> until we come and open the door for right. them. They, and we greet them all it. with a smile. <laughs> right. Right. Well, I think, and I think that's a wonderful example because I think people don't realize all the different ways they could be involved. So I think you've mentioned a few of them. You said you you read to kids. You're there welcoming them. What are some other activities and things that um, you do as members of Faith? We uh, we have started several. Uh, I don't know what to label them, but we have events. Okay. Okay. okay one of our main events that we. Uh, started is a dance with fathers and their children. Okay. And uh, at this particular event, uh, uh, fathers would dress up, the children would dress up, and uh, the mothers sort of felt left out, so <laughs> the mothers started coming. So it became a very big event right. and uh, a huge turnout. Everybody really enjoyed themselves, so we've made that an annual okay. event, so we look forward to uh, doing that. But we also had a uh, pizza party. We started okay. a pizza party and we would uh, invite the uh, families in. This would be a family affair. Mm -hmm. 
We have the pizzas and some to drink and some music and just just trying to uh, to nurture a, a, an environment that the fathers, the children, the mothers, everybody felt like they belong. Right. And, uh, and most of our events have been very successful. Well, and do you find, and this may be more maybe a question for the principal, but do you find that discipline or behavior really changes when you're present in the building among I, the kids? I, w I would say so. Uh, the thing is, it's an event that brings a lot of pride to the right. children. You should be there when we have donuts with dad. Right. It's like they have a commercial about the uh, pudding face, right, right. the ear to ear <laughs> smile. Right. You should see the children's faces when they walk in with dad, godfather, uncle, mm -hmm. and so forth. And that, uh, that just ricochets throughout the whole building. And then we get those dads to go. After we meet and have donuts with the kids, we have a short meeting, but we encourage the fathers and male figures to go to their child's classroom. Mm -hmm. And no, not knowing when dad or uncle or whoever might show up is a, is a bit of a deterrent <laughs> right, right there. Right. That's, that is very true. Well, and I think one of the things you also mentioned is there's a wide range of ages of men involved in the program because you're at Montessori, which is an elementary school, so you may get a lot of younger dads. So can you talk a little bit about kind of um, how the organization is for fathers of all or men of all ages who are interested in being involved? Well, I, I could speak to uh, Washington Montessori. Mm -hmm. it, it was it really floored Mr. Williams and I the first Face started about two years ago. So that first day of school, we set up a table. Mm -hmm. And as the fathers would come in, because see, they had the, the million. Million Father March. The million right. Father March. So that was already advertised. Right. So there were more fathers who were going to bring their children right. than normal. So when they would come through the door, we would ask them to come over to the table mm -hmm. and we would introduce the face program to them. And it just floored us how receptive. Right. They were to this, and they really okay. Well, as soon as I drop off, I come back, and the brother would come back, and they would talk to us. Okay. So we we uh, started out our face program. I think we had about eighty. We about, averaged oh, from good. the first year. We averaged over eighty-six fathers right. and male figures for each event. We oh, had an event great. called Bring Dad to School Day, mm -hmm. where we encouraged the fathers and male figures to come in and spend at least one hour in their child's mm -hmm. classroom and I video every event right. so I was there with the camera and I would start with the sign-in sheet mm -hmm. and earlier on we had 35 or 40 dads and we finished that day with 118 oh my God. fathers and male figures and that's just a great source of pride and, and, and the best thing about it is these are young fathers. Right. See, we st our children can start at age three in Montessori school. Right. Yes. All, of the pa all of the father's parents aren't all the way up. <laughs> but still, they're very encouraged. They'll come and seek us out to find out when the next event right. is. And I think that's one of the most monumental parts of this FACE program is we are we have encouraged young fathers to be a part of their child's education, and that's what it's all about. Right, right. And I think you also made um, a really good po point in terms of the involvement of the young fathers and how I think at first people are apprehensive. They're like, what is this organization? Or are they going to welcome me with sagging jeans or whatever the case may be? But one of the things that always comes up, and I mentioned this also to Warice, I guess, how do you feel when people say, oh, SLPS parents don't want to be involved? They, they, they just, they're just not involved. And on a daily basis, you see that they are. So how do you, how do you respond to people who say that to you? I, I don't get it. I don't it's know. A, it's a myth as far as I'm concerned <laughs> yeah, because uh, that's one of the things that I'd always heard that, uh, that we don't support our children at school. Mm -hmm. But if you come to any of our face meetings, and there have been fathers who have found out about the face program, they will seek us out. Mm -hmm. They will seek uh, Maurice and myself out to find out when they can sign up and how they can sign up. And that's the most encouraging. A few bad dads <laughs> have given young dads a bad name mm -hmm. because we, right. have, we have just a, a multiple number of uh, fathers and male figures. Like I say, I'm a godfather. Right. And uh, who have become a part of faith and they love it and I think word kind of spreads to their relatives if they have someone at the school and right. they'll seek us out to be a part. Right. 
Well, I guess coming up, looking at this um, new school year um, coming up, you said you'll have your dance, which will happen, um, your family dance. But are there, are there other large events that you see happening for FACE at your school? Well, uh, last year it didn't happen because of his schedule, but Dennis Edwards, the uh, mm -hmm. former lead singer of The Temptations, yes, yes. and he has his own group now, and they're very active, and we had scheduled him to come because oh, he grew okay. up without a father in mm -hmm. the house. So we're going to work on that aspect, and we want to, we found out that the Rams and some of the right. baseball, the baseball team, mm -hmm. they have uh, an outlet to come right. and uh, talk to kids and so forth, so we want to keep the fathers encouraged, so we want to kind of expand what we're doing to uh, uh, I don't want to like dangle a carrot to the parents right. because the it's about the kids. Right. But we like to keep them encouraged and we like to keep them coming back. Right, right. And I guess if you had, you know, if you have a 30 second pitch and there are fathers out there who are watching who are still saying, well, I don't know if that organization's for me, what would you say to them? <clears throat> I would say to them that uh, at this point in time, young people need the father figure as a role model and uh, <clears throat> I see a lot of fathers involved in football I drive by Matthew Dickey's or Herbert Hoover and they're out there with them <clears throat> I think they need to now get involved with their education I think there's been a lack of their involvement mm -hmm. I think at this point they should get as involved in their academic as they are the football I think I think uh, as a matter of fact I think the academics are more important but that's me speaking. Okay. And final word there? Well, I, to piggyback off what he said, uh, it's, just, it's just crucial that they, that they know that there is an outlet for them to come in and become a part of their child's education. And when word starts to seek out, the show me state part of the type of thing is what I encourage them. Just please come and see what we do. See the number of fathers that we have out mm -hmm. and see the faces of your own children light up when you're there to be a part of their life and their education. That's just, that's just very important. Right. Well, I thank you both for joining us today, and I'm sure that the children at Washington Montessori appreciated the shout out, and I'm sure they're thankful for what you do as well. And for people who are interested in more information about the face of St. Louis Public Schools, I encourage you to please go to the website at www.slps.org and see how you can get involved. If your school does not have a FACE program, please find a way to start one, because I think as both of our volunteers have mentioned, it's just really important to make sure that we get everyone involved in our children's education. So thank you and see you next time on City Corner.